Welcome back, everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today, I have a very special guest here, Lily Williams. She is running in New Hampshire in District 2, and she is absolutely a firecracker, a fighter, and I'm super excited to have her here on the channel to have a discussion about her campaign. And also, it's worth noting, she is a, sur a survivor of communism and the only person running for Congress currently right now that is a survivor of communism. And I wanted to take a moment to allow her to share some aspects of her story, some of her past, and maybe some mm -hmm. of you will come away with a greater understanding of what these freedoms really mean to us. And, you know, from coming from someone who grew up in a, in a very terrible regime. So Lily, thank you so much for joining me today. Well, thank you for having me, Eric. It's, uh, it's absolutely my pleasure to be invited to be here. Um, my name is Lily Tang Williams. Tang actually was my maiden name. And uh, then I married to a, a Texas man. When I first uh, came to the United States, I met him on the first day and first evening is that something now we've been married for 32 years <laughs> and that's why my last name is williams and when you google lily tang williams i'm the only one there with 20 page of me because i have been fighting for freedom in this country for past i would say eight years i have been consistent but i feel like i have not done enough to save america that's why now i'm running for congress <laughs> in new hampshire so and I, we will hopefully let the, you know, um, people will get to know my lifetime stories and get inspired and to also fight for freedom here. You know, it, it's just so crazy. I think a lot of Americans, Lily, they just don't quite understand the freedoms that they're born into. You know, someone who has, you know, the, the luck of being born in such a great place like the United States, they don't understand the struggles that people go through in other parts of the world. And, and sometimes, you know, complete terror that people live in under these regimes, under these different, mm -hmm. you know, political ideas. And you see all these people pushing these crazy uh, political movements, right, that are very far left or very far progressive or what have you, whatever they want to call it. But they, they're, they're, they act like they want something. But I don't think they quite understand what they're really, what's on the menu, do they? Well, because they're miseducated and they're being indoctrinated. Or well, to correct your you, uh, record, I'm not the uh, only Republican candidate as an immigrant who were born to under communism, but I'm the only one who were born in communist China running as a Republican um, this year. So I, I lived in China for 24 years. I was born uh, in Chengdu, Sichuan province, uh, um, my parents were in literary workers class and, you know, all those workers and peasants in China bought into communism. Uh, when Communist Party Mao sold them communism, oh, this utopian society, you will have everything you need. You take whatever you need, tell peasants were 70% of the population in China and that time, oh, you will have land. And so they want to, them to rise up against their landlords. And some people say, well, my landlords were not too bad to me, but the communists want them to dig, to instill hatred into their head and envy into their heart and get them rise up and to support communism. Guess what? Those exactly peasants who supported communism were starving to death under mouths a great leap forward from 1958 to 1961 before I was even born, 14 million of them estimated. No official figures. You know, China still believe, lots of Chinese still believe, oh, it was caused by three years natural disasters, like flooding, drought. No, I did not know the truth until I come to this country. It was precisely caused by Mao's central planning communist parties economical policies that they want to tell peasants how to grow food and they also um, made the peasants uh, uh, in their local towns turn turn over all their uh, food harvest where they had nothing left for them to eat and they were not allowed to bake from one village to one village because they keep track people by 
using the national ID called a household registration. If you were born into one village, you want to travel to another city, another state, you need to show papers to travel. You were supposed to trap where you supposed to live. So people don't know the truth about China. So they were starving to death and precisely because they're mass famine, Mao lost power and we, China had a new president, new Mr. Liu later, and Mao used that to start his uh, great cultural revolution because uh, he wanted to use that to purge his political enemies inside of China's Communist Party. Just people wow. don't know. Yeah. Wow, that is crazy. I mean, I know that there are, you know, many Americans here that understand the concept of like the Chinese social credit system. And of course, like all of the surveillance that goes on in China. I mean, there's all the facial recognition software. There's all this paperwork. And it's just such a bureaucratic society where all the information is controlled and access to people and goods is controlled. So maybe for let's just say the layman in the room that might be watching this video and trying to understand a, a greater form of, of what communism really is and what it entails. I mean, give us just the, the penny tour idea. Like what is communism trying to accomplish? What, what are, what are the mechanisms they use? So what, in, in your experience, what exactly is communism and what, what does it mean to accomplish and in what ways? And, and maybe kind of, you know, draw from your experience living under communism. Well, I encourage people, if they don't know what the communism is, also go to read the Karl Marx book, Communist Manifesto. Uh, and the Mao, of course, used typical Marxist communism and separated people, all Chinese, because we all look the same, we all have same skin color and race, but still he used communism to separate people into oppressor versus oppressed. Communism is also economic system where the state, the government controls all means of production. When I was growing up, I never heard of a private company, private property ownership. Those all were demonized words and uh, all private properties were confiscated after PRC founded 1949. So my parents worked for state factories six days a week, could not even keep us well fed. You know, I'm the oldest of three children. And of course we were brainwashed to say you, you, you supposed to say long never cheer my mom. He was like a god to us, like a children to, to us little kids. And you got to say long live communist party. No questions asked, just complain. And that means also the communist party dictatorship controlled everything from schools to all the press, all the TVs, all the periodicals. There's no separation of powers. Imagine they control all the court system, prosecutor's house, law enforcement, and control the military. So you are very powerless individual in China and, and everybody is disarmed. So you cannot fight back. There's no way you can fight, fight back. I say the tyranny with chopsticks or even kitchen knives. What we have is kitchen knives. And we were very partners. I, I did not know because I was a red child under mouse, so-called oppressed. I'm supposed to be always oppressed and, you know, in China or supposed to be oppressed here in America, according to critical race theory. But they, they, my childhood memory was very painful. And think about, I was a red child. We're supposed to be workers rule, according to the Communist Party. You know, according to Marxism, workers rule, peasants rule. We were the, you know, oppressed groups. We need to rise up and, you know, and doing all the identity politics, but we were starving. Your food rationing coupon is dependent on your parents' positions inside of a communist party, inside of state factories. So my parents were not educated. They were very poor. So we got this. Let's give you an idea, Eric, how much we could have called the protein coupons. Protein coupon means all the eggs, all the meat, every meat, pork, chicken, or beef, just like unheard of, just very, very like expensive. So all that for a family of five a month were 2.8 pounds a month for family of five. Now you can say why I was a very for an, an, for an entire month, entire month for family of five, 2.8 pounds. That included all the eggs. So when I, whenever I had a birthday as a little girl, I got 
oh happy birthday or one boiled egg that was your birthday gift don't no never had other gifts never had birthday parties you'll be lucky just to have some meat and one egg i never i do not remember one single toy i had so under communism let's just say okay now <laughs> It's kind of scary to think about where our country is headed. The country that you love so much. You love this country. You love the United States. You love what we've worked for, what we have. But we're under a clear and present danger of going the same route and under communism. Okay. If you spoke out against the government and like I can go on Twitter and say, hey, Mitch McConnell, you're a jerk or hey, Nancy Pelosi, you're a jerk or whatever. And there's, you know, I don't have to worry about someone kicking in the door, at least well for now and, and causing a stink. But under communism, Lily, tell us what would happen if you spoke out against your government. Well, I learned to whisper uh, when I was a little girl because everybody else was whispering. You were afraid your neighbors hear you say something politically incorrect. You could get the, the police lock on your door. You know, remember, under Mao's Cultural Revolution, I was two years old to 12 years old. Ten years was like politics in your face every day. And you have to be absolutely politically correct or you can get a category as a oppressor. You know, who are under oppressors group under Mao? Let me tell you, it's very arbitrary. Of course, rich farmers, landlords are judged by you know, how much you, you had. But also county revolutionaries and uh, bad influencers and rightists. They were supposed to be our enemies. We supposed to hate them. And those people had to go to public square to lower their head, apologize for being black class and uh, draw the night with their families. If you're a teenager, you, if you change last name, say, I denounce my grandparents. I denounce my um, parents who were black. I want to be red. I want to be a mouse, young pioneer or red guard. They had to change their name. The basically draw the line against their families. And those sessions are called the struggle sessions. And this word become popular because America is going through similar, some kind of cultural revolution at a smaller scale, you know, and the separate people into, you know, oppressor versus oppressed. And if you're a white male, you know, Eric, according to critical race theory, you are absolutely born racist and you're oppressor. So that's why I'm so scared. This same kind of identity politics is what the Mao used to do his cultural revolution. He used to destroy the four old, old culture, habits, ideas, and customs to purge his political enemies and use our most innocent people, young people. You can call them red guards, or today they're called the social justice warriors. And then he used them to do his political purge. When he become absolutely godlike, absolutely in control of the um, party. And the Mr. Liu, President Liu was house arrested and died alone under house arrest. And uh, then Mao threw his supporters under the bus. That includes the scientists, teachers, intellectuals, most important, all the millions of red guards, young people who were shut down schools, who were doing political struggle sessions full time. Guess what Mao did? Google it, down to the mountain campaign, send the urban youth to countryside to be re-educated by peasants. I lost my three uncles overnight. My grandparents had no parental rights, lost their children overnight. All go to countryside to, to be re-educated. I only come home once a year. And they were their stuck, really believed the party the re regime. By the time they woke up, it, they already wasted 10 years in the countryside. And some girls came home crazy. Maybe they were raped. There's a movie called the Show Show. She was raped. And uh, I had a one neighbor, a girl came home crazy. She was blowing bubbles, the eyes were funny. And her mom said, uh, you know, she, something horrible happened. We don't know what it is. And she just said, I see white ghosts. I see white ghosts. And I was so scared. Think about my childhood the memory started. Seeing red guard doing struggle sessions in my grandma's uh, neighborhood, a public square, then get them into military trucks and uh, drive into public execution site. Boom, boom, boom. They were executed, a black class. 
And I was so scared, I could not even look at those people in the military trucks. They were, they were humans, but they were so pale. They, 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 their heads were down. And uh, that was at the peak of the Cultural Revolution. Maybe I was four or five years old. And, uh, and then I saw a dead man's body in my grandmother's community water well. It was 20 feet deep. Everybody ran on that water. Then one morning they said, oh, come to look. It was like a dead man floating on top of the water. I just ran away. I got so scared. I never thought about it again. This memory come back to me last year when I dig into my childhood memory about Mao's Cultural Revolution. And I asked my uncle, who was that man? My uncle said he was a black class member, could not handle the pressure, the torture anymore. And he committed a suicide by jumping into the water well. And uh, so, so now you know why it's like, a, wow, this uh, kind of identity politics really scares me. And it is a typical communist tactic to divide people into classes in China. But here, they divide people by race and skin color and demonize America as a systemic racist country and demonize people who were born into their families with their race, with their color, it doesn't matter. All men are created equal. Even Dr. King said we should not judge people based on their skin color. We should judge by their individual content of their character. And but it's like a oh civil rights movement and like went backwards. Like we never even stick to what he said anymore. Now it's all about the identity politics and the cancel culture. Like you said, you worry about. You say something inappropriate, you will get canceled on social media. I got restricted by Facebook many times, and uh, I have to worry about what I say in my new country. I saw the free speech. Doesn't matter if you agree with me or not. I have a right to say it. You cannot silence me. Because if you cannot speak freely, you cannot think freely. Then you cannot you know, express uh, and, and come up with solutions to solve our problems. So you will be very dark place. That's why I'm a very starch supporter also of uh, free speech. Yeah, that is so interesting to hear that story because I, people just don't understand the terror that folks around the world have lived under in certain regimes. And, you know, I'm sure that, you know, the situation here is a lot better. And I, I'm, I think it's so cool that you're running for office. And I really hope that we can drum up some support for you. Uh, why don't, let, let's talk about that a little bit. I mean, how's the, how's the campaign going? Well, um, I have two Republicans in the primary with me, which is September 13th. And uh, I am, a, of course, I'm always libertarian leaning Republican. I believe self ownership. I believe um, maximum individual liberty. I am a constitutionist and I want to hold everybody to their oath to defend constitution and defend our country against the enemies, domestic and foreign. And I just don't understand. If you swear on, you know, on the Bible, when you got elected into office, how come they do not follow the constitution? So I think I'm outsider. I'm not career politician. I'm not part of the establishment. I have a totally grassroots campaign. And uh, all my donors, if you look, look at the fec.gov site, all from grassroots individual people who donate a small amount, maybe average 50 bucks or something like that. So I encourage people, if you trust me to get elected into Congress, and I will tell you truth, even though we disagree, and that I will call out the communist socialist policies from the House floor, I will debate AOC, Bernie Sanders, like the people who want to be socialist, want to push their socialist policies, agendas, because I lived under it. I don't want to live under again. But I recognize their words, like their tactics, their policies. It all sounds wonderful, like what Mao promised the Chinese people, and the Communist Party still promised Chinese people. But those are lies. Those are empty promises. They will never come true. So I will be the best person to go in there and including also defend our country against the China's Communist Party's infiltration. 
you know, they have infiltrated into our country for so long, and they use lots of money to buy influences, corrupt politicians at all levels of government, and they're investing in our land and the business and uh, and use the Confucius Institute for past 18 years, infiltrate our schools to indoctrinate our children. Wonder why our kids don't know the horrors of communism. They think China is wonderful. We should be like China. It's so efficient, doing things so fast. They only show them what they want them to say. They don't understand that Chinese people are the biggest victim groups of CCP. And they were locked down for 10 weeks because of zero COVID policy in Shanghai. My friends were locked down. They had the money. They could not buy food. They had no weapons to shoot out. They were trapped inside of their big buildings, apartment, and they were barbed wires around their community buildings. When case positive, your whole building can be under quarantine. Do they have human rights or not? Of course they do. But our media in this country and, and some politicians uh, sympathize toward China or do business with them and the corporations who want to profit from the second largest market, they don't call them out. That's all I, Eric, I have been threatened by CCP because I have been talking loudly against them, against communism for past five years. And by going to school, educate our youth in middle school, high school, and colleges, and talk to non-profit grassroots organizations, and talk to the GOP group to say, you know, we need to call them out. And this China social credit system is learned by all the free world countries. You tell me why? Why are they taking Communist Party's playbook tactics to rule over people living in Canada, Australia, Europe, and including U.S.? Like they're pushing for ESG now. ESG, you know, the, the, similar to China's social credit score, but it's a rating system for our state government, local government, and the uh, co um, corporations according to their climate change narrative. It's like right. everything's political. Is that dangerous? Yeah. So, so they want to be able to have a number or a score associated with how how much you're willing to play ball with their with their views. Okay. Oh well, this person, uh, you know, he he doesn't push the you know climate control narrative. So, oh, we're going to give him a lower score. And just to be clear, and I'm sure you can reiterate this if you need to or whatever, but under the Chinese uh, social credit score. The lower your score, you actually can be denied goods and services. You can be denied medical care, basic and necessities. And mortgages. No mortgages for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean. And no travel. No travel, no mortgages. Your kids cannot go to good school, cannot go to universities. You cannot get a promotion to your job. You could lose your job. You cannot buy train tickets, air tickets, cannot get a passport, and you'll be stuck basically in your home, be poor and be hungry. And your friends will leave you because they're afraid. Your low social credit scores can impact them and you will be banned from social media. So you will be just isolated and powerless and silenced and poor. Maybe someday just die. Oh, this is so sad. I feel so um, sympathetic towards my native country's people. They are the biggest victims, but some of them still are propagandized daily because the party, one party controls. It's like a minister of truth controls all the information. And there's some Chinese American in this country also watch propaganda show called the CCTV from Beijing in the United States through the internet. It's like, a, uh, it's a human tragedy when people cannot wake up. Look how many Americans are awake, look at. Look at what's going on in this world. Can, are they asking questions right now? Did they suffer enough in the past two years pandemic and believe all the official narratives and unelected bureaucrats tell us they represent the science and you got to do what they want you to do. Mask mandate, vaccine mandate, vaccine passport, or you are being discharged from your job. They're frying our military people because of vaccine status. And it is to me, it's like almost like a purge. Who are the people who will refuse to get the vaccines? People who ask questions, who have religious exemptions, and who know the truth, uh, whatever reason they have, you know, they're not in line with the mainstream narrative. And they want to focus on early treatment. They want to focus on the truth. They want to focus on natural immunity. 
But you could not even ask a question about those things on social media, the public square, digital square. And I oppose children's mask mandate at the very beginning, 2020, and, and, and the later when school opened. And I got a warning by Facebook three times. They shut me down for 24 hours jail time. <laughs> well, Lily, I got completely kicked off Facebook. So, you know, they, they completely banned me off Facebook uh, for various things. Now, I'm, I'm not going to go into too much more detail, but I, I haven't had my access to my Facebook account for over, I think, a year and a half. I had 820,000 followers on Facebook. And of course, you know, because I moved the needle in the direction they don't want to see it moving in, especially in the, in the, in the 2A world. Um, you know, they, they don't like that. They don't like anything that goes against the narrative. And I think that we're, we're seeing a very dangerous precedence getting set in our country where people are just beginning to be more and more accepting of a, of a Chinese style social credit system, of an overbearing bureaucracy, of an overbearing administrative state that just has complete control. I mean, we see with the recent Supreme Court case, the Bruin case, um, that it's established some pr pretty unique protocol for how Second Amendment cases are going to be handled moving forward. And I guess we'll sort of pivot to Second Amendment because um, I began following you on Twitter. Uh, some of the people that I follow shared some of your tweets and I like what you had to say. So I decided to follow you on Twitter. And after a while, I ended up determining, wow, this, this lady's a battle axe and she's totally about the Second Amendment, totally about guns. So as a survivor of communism, as a person who has seen all sides of the coin, um, what would be your take on the Second Amendment? What, what, how important is the Second Amendment to you? And uh, what advice would you give to someone who is, you know, willing to give up their Second Amendment rights for this this perceived safety, which we know it's just a perception of safety, not literal safety. But what would be your message to them? Well, I live in China for 24 years. And I even did not know what the individual rights means until I was exposed to somebody told me about Declaration of Independence and told me about Bill of Rights and especially the Second Amendment right. And I saw this country was so cool. I need to come here living in freedom. It took me two years to really manage my escape of China. You need a permission to quit your job, to go get a passport. And I had to sign an agreement to come here, promise I would go back. And otherwise there would be consequences. But that's long story. Anyway, when I came to this country, I thought my rights are going to be guaranteed. It's in the constitution, founding document, the supreme law of the land. So I was not political. I was trying to raise family and starting my own business, learning English. And it took me 20 years to wake up to completely get rid of my educational garbage from China. And the first issue got me jump off SAFA to go to state capital that time in Colorado, Denver, to testify first time in my life as a citizen. It was gun control bills in Colorado. I got so scared. It's like, what? They're trying to, you know, limit our gun rights. So they passed lots of gun control laws on the party line because Democrats controlled everything that time. And my testimony, of course, cost some followers and, and they follow me later. But I did write an article, Guns Against Tyranny, published by National Review 2013, my first time in America, published the article with their help. And you can still find it on my website, Guns Against Tyranny. Then 2005, when, when, when Obama trying to say, hey, I'm going to just use my pen to sign executive order to take away an AR-15s. So I took a picture. My husband, I was so upset. I said, uh, dear, let's take a picture. I, before the law become effective in Colorado 2013, I bought my own AR-15 and uh, woman size too, shorter <laughs> for small woman. And it was grandfather in, so I was not subject to their magazine limit. And uh, so I told my husband, 2015, let me take a picture. I need to send very strong message to the gun grabbers. So I took this picture. Later, I posted about what happened to us, Tiananmen Square, and the students died, citizens died, crushed by military tanks. And I was calling out the largest the champions of mass killings were totalitarian government. If you know the history, study history.
or young people who want the gun control, start the history. Once you're disarmed, they kill as many people as they want. You have no way to fight back. So this is the issue I feel absolutely passionate about. I testified many times in, in Colorado State Capitol, and uh, I, I spoke about it, and I post this picture all the time. I also post, I had the Chinese friends come over. I took them to gun shops. My family come over, um, become legal immigrant. I took them to gun range and said, you know what? My mom had to bake in China to have food, to have salary, higher salaries. I said, I will never bake. If I have my guns, I will never bake because I will never be enslaved. So if, if people want to check out, and uh, I have this AR-15 picture where my, um, uh, my, my son's Air Force, uh, you know, pants and boots, but boots were too big. So you don't even say the boots, just pants. And, and, I, and that was 2015 picture was seen on social media by 1.3 million people. And lots of people did not, you know, lots of people respond super overwhelmingly positive, but I also got some attacks and a threat. And it's like, oh, you look so scary. I'm a five foot one Chinese immigrant woman. I look scary in front of a US flag to you. You're ashamed to be American. You do not understand your natural rights given to you by God, by your creator, not by any government. We have a right to self-defense. We have right to free speech, free religion. And uh, don't tell me you were born here and you attack me, I'm so threatening to them. Who is threatening to our freedom right now? Not me, I just need a, a, a what do you call the deterrent. I need a leverage to protect myself, my family, my business against the communist, socialist, and the tyrants taking over. You know, I, they, you know, they can ban whatever they want, but we're not gonna give up. We're gonna hold on to our guns. I love it. I love it. You are a battle axe. And it's so refreshing because, you know, we've been trying so hard over all these years to preach to people so much on our channel. I mean, I've been doing this almost 14 years and we've always tried to explain to people how important the sanctity of the Second Amendment is and and how much we need to protect our gun rights because we need to be able to stand toe to toe with anybody that would hurt us. And there are so many people that they just don't understand how bad things can really get. And they don't understand that throughout the world, there are so many people that would give up so much to be able to protect themselves. And they don't even know what it feels like to live in their own home and know that if someone tries to hurt them, that they have the means to protect themselves. All you need, Lily, is a chance to defend yourself. You're not trying to be threatening anybody, but you know what? If somebody wants to mess with you, you've got the ability to protect yourself. And that's what it all comes down to. It's one of the most important fundamental human rights on this entire planet is the right to self-preservation. And it's such a uniquely American right that we are able to protect ourselves and the constitution, the second amendment, you know, especially the second amendment is giving the government clear instructions to stay away from our dang rights. Okay. And it's one of the most clearly written uh, items in the constitution. It's the most clear constitutional language. When you look at all of the other amendments that are in the constitution, very few of them point to such a direct thing in a way that they say shall not be infringed. And, you know, I too, Lily, wonder very much about the people who are serving uh, in office currently and that they don't honor their oath to the Constitution. They honor the oath to their own selfish interest, their own narcissism, their own greed. You know, they're willing to lie. They're willing to threaten. They're willing to use uh, these alphabet agencies as weapons against their political opponents. Huh, Lily, what does what does this sound like? Well, I think that uh, we have to be kind to our American citizens because we don't want country to be divided. And uh, I, I found out lots of people who want to gun control, they mean well, they want to reduce mass shooters, but they just also very trusting government. They very, very trust authority, tell them. And they trust the social media, left the mainstream media to feed them the narratives. The guns are dangerous. In California, they want to sue gun manufacturers. It's like, are you kidding me? It's like, uh, why don't you, they should go outside of their comfort zone, do some research themselves and to know real history. What happened to the Jews people, Jew, uh, you know, uh, Jews under Nazis. What happened to all the people living in socialist, communist countries were totally slaughtered. And 100 million people died under 
communism in the past 100 years. What experiment do you want to say, oh, that's not a real socialism, communism? Uh, this is something wrong terribly with our educating system. That's why I'm also very starch supporter of parental rights and, and school choice and freedom of education account. Because when you have this kind of uh, dominating narratives and uh, when our kids don't know the truth, they come out, they live in fear. Some of those gun control people, have they, have they gone to shooting range to practice AR-15, to practice handguns or AK-47? Why are they afraid of guns? When I first time touch guns in this country, I was scared too. I had no rules, no education, no knowledge. And I scared people by touching guns, And but I learned. And when I fired my first shots, you know, accurately, I feel so empowered. I feel free. So people got to be educated. I suggest people to take their kids and take their friends, invite them to go to shooting ranges, to get a gun uh, knowledge training and to practice, to get well-trained. And if our whole country, truly like a constitution said, we have a right to carry guns. It's called a constitutional carry. If that applies to the whole country, all other gun control laws are repealed, not constitutional. Our country will not have those kind of crazy mass shootings. That's why the criminals are very, very shrewd, clever. They target on gun-free zones because they know they're the only one bad guy has guns, can kill as many as they want. Nobody's going to stop them on time. Or you have a cop showed up, they still don't stop them on time. Because upon their court, the cops don't have the duty to go inside, risk their life to save you. You know what they're, happened in Texas. They're, they're going to they're going to turn the corner and they're going to run into Lily Williams and they're going to have a very bad day, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> well, I am a, just a very very passionate defender of our Second Amendment right of all our constitutional right. I I consider myself passionate, you know, advocate advocate for liberty. That without the guns, how do you defend your liberty, your family, your community, and your property? How do you defend your properties when you see the massive, um, you know, what you call riots and nudings that happened in the past two years and still happening? We have mobs dominated straight, criminals got released out of jails and by the liberal DJ, I mean DAs. How are we going to defend ourselves? Some, some Democrats are waking up. It's like, a, I cannot count on cops anymore. They talk about defund the police and they talk about release more cr criminals into the street. Maybe I should get armed, get trained. Otherwise, I cannot protect myself and my families. I'm hoping more questions to be asked, more people get trained. So we just have to do a better job to, to, to persuade our fellow citizens to join us and don't rely on government for protection. They have failed us. Wow. I mean, this conversation has been so enlightening to me and I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me and your story is so inspiring and it should inspire so many more people in this country. I mean, I, I really want people to share this video because listen, she is talking from the heart and she's telling you exactly what you need to know. I mean, listen, if you won't listen to me, listen to Lily. She is correct. She is speaking the truth. She is telling you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. Right. So before we, you know, before we go, let people know. Um, so where can they where can they find you? How can they help donate to your campaign if they want to help out? Uh, let, let's get all your particulars in there for people. So my website is a lilytongwilliams.com lilytongwilliams.com. If you just Google Lily Tongue Williams, everything will show up. And from my website, you can have a donate button there. You can please donate. Uh, everybody who likes messages, if you just like average donors, 25, 50 bucks, I would really appreciate. This is a grassroots campaign. I'm an outsider. I'm a threat to lots of people, including the CCP. And they might even channel dark money to my opponents. So September 13th is my primary. I need to get into U.S. Congress with the grassroots help. I am also on Facebook page, Lady for Congress, and Twitter, Lady for Liberty, and Instagram, and the YouTube, Lady Tom Williams. I'm everywhere. I have been very, very loud, very, very assertive. But look at where our country is today. I feel like this is my absolute calling to step up, to serve my new country I love, and to stop 
uh, United States from becoming the country I left. Wow. I mean, those words, it just fills me with so much inspiration. I, I am so glad that you got to come on the channel and have a chat with me. And thank you so much for hanging out. And guys, look, she's the real deal. Okay. But these are the type of principled people that we need running. And I am so excited, Lily. I hope you, I hope you win. I really do. I, thank you so much, you. Eric. I, 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 they thank you so, Eric. We are the majorities, silent majorities Americans should not be silenced anymore. If we lose our rights, if we are, you already see our rights under attack in the past two years, did you see what happened to Canadians and Australians? Australian government were taking loved ones to quarantine camps in China, in Shanghai. They take people, drag them on the floor to go to the quarantine bus and drive them away. You know, hey, World Health Organization said there's another pandemic coming. Like what's going to happen to us? I truly believe people have choices. It doesn't matter if it's a pandemic, it's a health emergency, the government emergency power should be limited. They cannot cancel our constitutional rights, shutting down everything just because there's a pandemic. Because we have a sixth amendment, amendment, they will think twice, right? We have a way to fight back. But that's why they are trying to focus on guns. They don't talk about gun-free zones, which is uh, causing lives. They don't talk about guns save lives, like this 22 years old in the end of that, and even though hundreds of cops in field in Texas. So they don't talk about all the issues. They don't address mental health, how we can actually help people to get treatment. All they have to do is have a bill. Gun control, gun control, no conversation needed, no discussion needed, no debate needed. I would debate them. If I go to Congress, as I promised before, I will urge to work with others to repeal all not constitutional gun control laws, all of them, and let's support constitutional carry all over the country. We will truly make America the best, the safest, and the most free and most prosperous, prosperous country. And as a, that shining city on the hill for the freedom lovers, for all the freedom lovers in the whole world. Wow. I mean, that's so inspiring. I can't wait to see you mop the floors with their butts. I know you will. And I can't wait. I, I, I really, really hope that you get to your goal and, uh, Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate your time. And guys, look, Lily's the real deal. Support her if you can. And uh, I wanted to make this video. And I, I know that you brought up some painful stuff. I know it's hard to talk about your past. I know sometimes the past can hurt. But I know also sometimes the past can give you strength. And I see that your past is filling you up with strength and, and letting you move forward in this crazy world. And it's very inspiring. And thank you so much for sharing your story with me, Lily. Well, thank you. I love America. I'm doing whatever I can to save America. Awesome. All right. Well, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed today's uh, presentation. Definitely check her out. I'm going to put all the links and particulars down in the description box below so you can support Lily and her efforts. Uh, I'm definitely going to be making a donation to help you out. And uh, everybody, thanks so much. Many more videos on the way. And any last words for people, Lily, before we head on? Well, I call it right now, what is going on in this country besides gun grabbers? It's a neo-Marxist cultural revolution. It's a similar to what I survived in Mao's cultural revolution. But I'm optimistic. I believe in goodness and strength of American people. So let's be kind to each other. Let's try to persuade people from another side to join our fight to keep our American dream alive. That was my last word. Be kind to each other, everybody. Those are words to live by. Thank you so much. Many more videos on the way, and we'll see you soon.